All right, we are live. Yes, yes, yes. So welcome everybody to Chalice and Chains Sunday Sandbox. And uh, I'm hopeful that all the tech issues are, you know, the tech gods are on my side today. I would like to get these regularly streamed and uploaded on YouTube without stupid interruptions so that this storyline makes sense to people who view it. <laughs> but we are going to have a hell of a session today. The crew of our lovely ship here that they have coined the Mustang Sally, the Gatrox 720 that they have been given by Cordella, the major domo of Durga the Hut, as a means to get around the galaxy and hopefully make some money for the cartel. The crew got themselves into a bit of a yeah, into a bit of trouble uh, early on, and found themselves in a untenable position where they basically had to work for the huts. And uh, they are now on their way to Toydaria to hook up with their contact Domdes, who has said that he is a chef and is looking for a crew to go out and find what is called a black gabaki mushroom to use as the sort of mainstay in the feast <clears throat> that the king of Toydaria will be hold hosting. Along the way, they, uh, in acquiring their ship, they also had to... Uh, fight off a biker gang that wanted them dead. They managed to escape from them. They got on their ship only to find a stowaway, a young Mary Allen girl named Kiga. And they also found that Kiga was responsible for a dead body that was in the cargo hold that was causing the ship to smell terribly. And so the crew did their best to clean up the ship, try to make things as pleasant as possible, while also note noting that they are very low on fuel, that they have transponder codes belonging to the prior owner, which could cause some problems um, if questioned, and... They don't know this ship all that well, and they got a girl who killed a guy who they managed to space out of the airlock, and they're going to Toydaria. And so the scene opens with sort of the reverse hyper, you know, uh, star lines, right? They, they are going from those long lines that you see in hyperspace, and everything seems to slow, 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 slow down until it pops into real space and the stars are now dots all out of the viewport and taking the taking the view and i imagine probably sasha uh who would be piloting and and, and zaya uh, maybe are on the bridge looking out the viewport and of course you immediately notice the big green swampy globe that is Toydaria, but what really catches your eye, just kind of coming out of the shadow of the other side of the planet, is a grayish-white triangular-shaped ship that you can only, nobody would mistake, this is a Imperial Star Destroyer. This is somewhat alarming because Typically, the Empire tends to leave hut space alone. But this particular ship kind of comes out. And you can see lots of traffic going in and out, up, you know, out of the planet, off the planet. Um, and you, you see, in some cases, there are patrols of TIE fighters just kind of, you know, circling and whatever. And all of a sudden... Your calm 
on the computer, it starts to blink, showing that you've got an incoming message. What do you do? Zaya, we got an incoming message. Uh, um, yeah, uh, it, it's your old buddies. <laughs> <laughs> My old buddies. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you remember correctly, when 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 uh, <sighs> when he and I uh, discovered you per se, you um, we met maybe the most important part of the empire that day. Well, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> so maybe it's your buddy. Right. No, he's a badass. You know he is. But yeah, Vader, v Vader, hey, let's not hope he's on that ship, okay? Um, because he's not uh, going to have forgotten us. It's, all right, yeah, Patch. Why are we here? They're going to ask us. Right. Well, why are we here? Do we tell them the truth? I guess uh, so. And... And I hit the comments button. Um, hey, uh, anybody that is alive on this ship might want to come to the bridge right now. Zai says over comms. Ingit will uh, head towards the bridge. How surprising. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, you know what that is, right, Ingit? Correct. That is a Star Destroyer. Imperial Fleet. Yeah. Um. Ham. And he, she, she, she pushes the, the comm button again. Uh, there's a Star Destroyer at our six. No, Positive. sorry. Positive. Uh, arrangement. Six. Sorry, sorry. I, I misspoke. At our, at our 12 there, uh, Hemi. You might want to be up here for this. And, uh. Hemi looks up. Um, from a circuit board, uh, just literally like two feet um, oh, from Zion, um, and, and 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 he just goes, "I can hear you." Um, <laughs> so what do what do we do, Captain? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have Ingot's buddy and uh, our little friend not be on this bridge because they are not a part of our crew. I think that is the wisest decision. And Inga, you do realize that your friend is lucky I didn't space him along with the garbage, right? Correct. However. Yeah. Because because he doesn't start becoming useful, I'm going to space him before we reach the atmosphere. And it'll be fun to watch his body burn as it, as it falls into the atmosphere. I must yeah. say that the bounty of the Trandoshan we eliminated... On the Hata, I believe, has a bounty with the Empire. That's it. That's wonderful. Um, we're going to turn There's that over when, when we hit the, the ground, right? Saya, listen, yeah. that's, that's the inn. We tell them we were looking for Empire craft to turn in this bounty. And just as Hemi says that, two things happen. The first most immediate thing happens is you hear the bleep, bleep 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 of your comms again um, just kind of reminding you that the thing is hailing yeah. you and before you can do anything you also feel another presence kind of you know get into the cockpit and you realize that um, Kiga has basically come running into the cockpit and she whoever is sort of like furthest to the back um, she kind of like puts her hand on you kind of pushes you out of the way a little bit and she's like Oh, this is not good. This is not good. We, we I can't go on that ship. I can't go on that ship. We got to get out of here. Up, Kiga, Kiga. None of us are going on that ship. I promise. That's an Imperial ship. What? what I, they can't get on the ship. They can't come and, 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 and they, search it. They will. They will not. Are, are you wanted by the Imperials? You have to be honest with us at this point, little girl. And maybe for the first time, she catches your eye and doesn't doesn't look down and she says I I don't know but I think so 
Most then, excellent. What a fortuitous event for us. A droid. This is not something that we're going to have a conversation about right now. As I told That'll you, make it even uh, easier to get on. It may, but this is what, it's, what we're going to do here. Hugo, you're going to go back to your little hidey hole that you've been in since you've been hiding on the ship. And then after that, we are going. the adults are going to deal with this situation, and you're not going to be here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to make it exactly as we were doing. We're going to hold the fact that we have the, the, the bounty in our back pocket and find out what they want. Turn the comms on. I Thank hit the comm. And as you hit the comm, you, you get... You, there's like an awkward pause... And you, you almost, you? yeah, you almost think like they were expecting you to answer immediately and now, and then they didn't expect you to answer at all. And so now when you do, they're caught off guard and they're like, oh, oh th- this is, this is the Star Destroyer Vigilance. Please transmit your identification codes and state your purpose here today. This is Zaya Kamara, captain of the... Mustang Sally, as we call our ship. Um, have we done something wrong, Star Destroyer? No, no, nothing wrong. Routine and routine procedure here. We just need to make sure that everybody who's coming in and going out is legitimate. You understand. Sure, but in the Outer Rim, I didn't think that there was that type of jurisdiction out here. And there's this pause. Two, three, four seconds, and they're like... The Empire has jurisdiction anywhere within the Imperial boundaries. Now, please transmit your identification codes and state your business here. Send them. Please. And has anybody bothered to actually check your identification codes? I don't believe you nope. have. I think Hemi's huh? gonna. I'm oh, sorry. I believe we ran into that problem leaving, leaving uh, the last planet. Well, you know, I mean, we did talk in the, you know multiple times about going through all of the systems on the ship, so I would think that that would be something that Hemi did. Okay, so we'll assume then that that Hemi. You know what I'm saying? Like, check like that we, out. Yeah. We talked Many a times that that's something that we did when during the. Uh, <laughs> during so the Hemi would know, and and he, you know, whether he related to the crew or not, I'll leave up to him. But he would know that this is still registered to the former owner um, by the name of Quill Shepard. Quill Shepard was at least the what the limited information that you were able to find. Um, he was mostly a two bit smuggler that worked out of the outer rim, human, um, and. Obviously, the fact that he had his ship repossessed means that he was either not very good at his job or just had one too many failures. So beyond that, you didn't have a chance to really search too much, but you do know that it belonged to Quill Shepard um, and that it was known, the ship was known as the Terrapin. Captain, um... We haven't registered our ship. This is still registered to Quill Shepard. I understand that. And, you know, it's uh, not something that uh, somebody that talks as well as I will have an issue with. with, with yeah. The... Um, you guys seem to be on great terms already. Okay, I'm sending it. <laughs> so, uh, Star Destroyer Vigilance, um... We are newly acquired to this ship, um, and we're told that we'd be able to register it when we land on the planet. Um, I hope that doesn't pose a- an issue. They say, hold on just a moment. And normally when you send over your transponder, it also sends over the manifest of the crew, um, which I assume, you know, that you guys would have updated, um, but they say... You, after a couple of minutes, they say, uh, I, I, indeed, I, I see the problem. I think the most <clears throat> efficient solution here would be for you to uh, take advantage of expedited travel and docking fees. If uh, 
if you want, go down to the surface and um, we will make arrangements there, but you will have to uh, to pay the fee for that expedited docking. Does that sound okay? Very good. When you when you make it to the surface, yeah. make sure that you you head to the Imperial right. Customs Office and let them Sorry. know that the Star Destroyer Vigilance is here to collect the docking fee. Understood? S sir. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Am I muted? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, what are said fees? Like, what is the total of them in credits? Standard well, fee for this type of. Uh, type of unusual situation is 1,000 credits. Ouch. Okay. Um, I think I think that sounds... Uh, I mean, I think, yeah. We can handle that. That's something that uh, we'd be happy to pay. And then uh, we can just dock and go among, amongst our business. Is that correct? Affirmative. Ingate will kind of poke Zaya on the shoulder and, and lean in where the other uh, person on the comms can't hear and say, Zaya, reminder, Chandoshan is worth 10,000 credits with the Empire. Perhaps we can negotiate our efforts to capture this criminal to waive the fee and get the 10,000 bounty. So, Vigilance. Yes. What if we had a... Uh... Bounty that was uh, 10 times that amount in our possession. If you have a bounty, you can take that to the bounty office down on the planet, and they would be more than happy to make arrangements and verify this bounty. Wonderful. We will do so. We, we, we may pass at this point. Is that correct? You may. Lovely talking to you today, Vigilance. Uh, maybe make your acquaintance again at some point. And you don't get any response. You just literally get <laughs> as they cut comms. Well, um, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I make sure that she turns comms off as well. Sasha, please turn off comms. Affirmative. Okay. Uh, and she turns around and she goes, well, so now we got nine grand. Well, actually, now we have 11,000 credits because we already have two in the bank. Uh, well, plus whatever that girl's worth. And as you say that, you no. actually realize that she's back on the bridge. Well, sort of. She's, she went out into the hallway, and she's she's looking a little bit terrified. Not at you, Hemi, and, and what you said, but she's looking just dead at the planet and kind of saying almost to, to herself, you can't, you can't go down there. It's not safe. And she... All right, so Zaya's going to look at the crew... She's gonna look back at Kiga. She's gonna look at the crew, and then she looks at Anglet, and she and she says, "I need you to do me a favor. Whatever arrangement you have with the Rodian, you go take care of that. Because again, as far as I'm concerned, he's very lucky to still be alive. The disrespect he showed us and showed me in particular here during this trip here, he's lucky we didn't space him in hyperspace because it would have been very messy for him." Kiga, why don't you tell us why? What what makes you say that, hon? I uh, I don't know. Just just a feeling, but boy, it's a strong one. The, there's something down there. Something's gonna Is there happen. Something you want to talk to, to all of us about, or would you just feel comfortable talking to me, there, Kiga? It's I don't. I, I mean, there's nothing really to talk about. I I don't I don't know. I don't always understand the feelings that I get, but I just I have a really bad feeling about this. You, I don't think this is going to be worth it. You should get out of here. Actually, well, sadly, I don't think we have enough fuel for that. We've got to fuel up, and we've got to take care of our registration issues, or we're going to get harassed all over the place. That is absolutely correct, there, Sasha. So, Kiga, I'm gonna have to keep that you're feeling profile. very, uh, very uh, reserved about this. It's not something that you have to leave the ship. You can stay on her as you've done before, and uh, we will uh, we will take care of the business that we have. And you know, I wish you would have spoke to us more because I would have explained to you the situation that we're in. 
but you were too tired and didn't want to. Remember that, right, Kiga? Yes, yes, I'm I'm sorry. It's I just you fine, I'll stay on the ship, but but just be you don't careful. Have to. You don't have to. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's best. I think so too. Inge would look over at uh, Zaya and uh, say, Zaya, perhaps she is in need of Ingot representation to clear bounty. We, I think we'll we, cross that bridge a little bit later there, Ingot. You have your one bounty and uh, the the small bounty on the Rodian if you want to just collect credits. I'm, I wouldn't want Papa to be uh, unhappy with any of us. Affirmative. He says that very snarky. I'm not sure I understand. I thought we went to work with the huts because we wanted to make money. There's money right in front of us. Why would we not make money? And a murderer, nonetheless. She's, Kiga. She's, she's just a youngster. We Kiga, can't do that. Come here, Miss the, my, my little Kiga. Sasha, we went to work for the huts. We're getting too worse than that. Yes, and we are certainly, we certainly probably will. You're correct, Emmy. We but, can't but, let this one. We can't let this one fall into the hands of the Empire. We just can't. It's, it's not even that, Sasha. We're going to, uh, as we, as, as you fly us in, Kiga's going to tell us a story. And if we don't, if she doesn't tell us a story, we are going to do exactly what Hemi is talking about. Do you understand me, Kiga? She looks back at you just with the most angry, piercing gaze you've ever seen. And that's um, fine. And when, yeah. and, and I, and I scowl at the door Zaya. The room. If she looks at Zaya angry like she's a threat, uh, Inga's going to like prep himself. Um, not, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You, uh, you probably would not yeah. perceive her as a threat only because she has no visible weapons um, and she's a nine-year-old girl and there's like a bunch of you between her and Kiga. Right. And okay, I, gotcha. it, you know, and I do, I close the door to the bridge. Okay. And sit down, sit down in my captain, you know, if there's a chair like that or whatever. Yeah. Say, we're waiting at this point, too, you've broken atmosphere, and so you are kind of proceeding. Sasha's kind of flying you down, you know, and I imagine it's a little bumpy as you're kind of, you know, now you're no longer in the vacuum of space, but um, and you can feel the ship kind of rattling and, you know, things start to, like, uh, spark a little bit. You know, the ship's holding together, but this thing is definitely, you know, about as, a, as much of a hunk of junk as the Millennium Falcon would be. This, you know, Quill didn't take great care of this ship but uh it seems like it's gonna hold together for now um and you do the the ship did beam you the coordinates um to the spaceport where you'll be able to land and, and a you know docking bay um and you get confirmation over your comms from the uh c you know the control tower um you know getrox and 20 you're cleared to land here's your coordinates blah 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 you know have a nice stay on toy area absolutely and Zaya, with all of her charms, and obviously she's not trying to charm a nine-year-old in the same way she tried to charm a not nine-year-old, um, but um, I, I don't like to wait, young lady. Tell us a story of first why there was a dead body in my ship and why you don't want to be around the Imperials. We won't leave the ship until you do so. And she gives you this resigned look, takes a deep breath, and then you kind of see this just sadness come over her face, right? And she talks very low. He was my brother. He was supposed to protect me. He got me out of that, that hellhole. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Kiga. Please speak up. He... I thought that he had... He was going to save me, but... He made a deal. 
just like, and she kind of looks over at Hemi and, uh, and gives him this nasty look, just like he wants to do. He was gonna gonna sell me for credits, like I was nobody to him. And I, I knew hey, it wasn't the hell safe. Did you come from, Pega? Where where did I come from? You called it a hellhole. I I would call many of the planets in this uh, outer rim hellholes. But which one do you come from? Oh, sorry. No, I meant I meant Nar Shadda. That's where, that's where I was. That's where we were. We were trying to get out, out from the core, out, out to somewhere safe. And I, well, I didn't know. I mean, my brother. He was older. He was the one I trusted. He was supposed to protect me. And then is he, he force? Was he force sensitive as well? Yes, I know you're force sensitive, young lady. You wouldn't talk about the way that you feel things if you weren't. No, 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 he wasn't. But he knew I was. So you are worth more to it is. <laughs> yes, that does make her worth money. That's certain. But. So you, did you kill your brother, Kiga? Yes. How did you kill him out of curiosity? Honestly, I don't even remember. I just, everything went black. I just. I just remember him telling me that they were coming for me, and and then and then there was so How much blood. I don't that? know. How long ago was that? And she kind of uh, then she, it must have been weeks. No, no, not that long. She pulls her like this little chrono thing out of her pocket, and she looks at it, and then she says, "Maybe, maybe eight galactic days." Okay. So the only people that know that that you murdered, which you did, your brother, are the five people on this ship. Is that correct? I think so. Where are your parents, Kiga? I don't know. When's the last time you've seen your parents, Kiga? I don't remember that either. You're a big ball of knowledge, young lady. Um, I'm very sorry for your misfortune with the, with your kin. And I do, and she looks directly and look at Hemi. She looks at Hemi. Understand why somebody may want to sell you because of your sensitivity. You would be worth money or credits. Sorry. Okay. But this is it. We're not selling you today. We're not slavers. And yes, we probably will do many other worse things than this, Hemi. Certainly. But if you can have in your conscience selling a nine-year-old girl into slavery... Zion, no one's talking about selling anyone into slavery. We're talking about turning in a bounty. No, we were not, Zion. We were talking about returning her in for her bounty. She is a bounty. There is a bounty on her. I may. Four sensitives are worth several thousand, tons of thousands credits. This is not a small bounty we are talking about. She has confessed to murder. She is a criminal. She is wanted by the Empire. I am a legal agent of the Empire as a bounty hunter. She says, no, no, please. I d it wasn't murder. It was self-defense. I didn't have a choice. I put my arm around Kiga. I get up from my, my chair and put my arm around her. And if I have any say in the matter, Kiga, we won't be doing any such thing to you. And, and Zaya gets up and stands next to, to Sasha. And it's maybe the first time any of you have seen her be sensitive to somebody else's feelings. And she goes, I think I got to stick with Sasha on this one. I smile at Zaya approvingly. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often either. Um, it is against my programming to allow a force sensitive of such high bounty to leave. Sasha, if, if you're for it, then I'll stand with you. But I don't understand. We were told that what we wanted to do 
wasn't good enough and that we had to work for the huts because the money was there. Now, suddenly there's a line that we can't cross to make money. It doesn't add up to me. But I'll stand with you. you know, it, I'm sorry. I think the long and the short of it Wait, is, you know is that she really might be uh, helpful to our crew if she's force sensitive. Did you, any of the two of you think of that? Because I'm pretty sure that me and Sasha are seeing that on the same page. Now, yes, she, she has said to us that we shouldn't come down here. But that doesn't mean that she's going to be right on everything. Do you think that's correct, Miss Kiga? Yes, yes. I, I'm. Of course, I could be of value to you. I mean, I know, I know ships and l stars. Know this one needs work, and and uh, I won't. I won't make any trouble. I promise. What is your feeling on the other member, uh, the, the other being on the ship, Kiga? Who, the, the, the Rodian? Yeah, the guy that threw up all over our deck. <laughs> you mean, he, and she's, you can tell she's trying to pick her words very, very carefully. Um, he's like... He's like you guys. He's well, not maybe not like you guys. And he, he looks at you and then and Sasha. Um, but he he will bring trouble. Hmm. All of us are going to bring trouble in a matter of ways. I think you might be like, bring us the biggest trouble there, Miss Kiga, um, because it's going to bring dissension to my crew. Um, that droid over there will never let me l stop talking about the fact of how much money you're worth. You do realize that. He doesn't have any programming to have feelings. And she looks down at the floor, or at the deck, and says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm, s uh, I'm causing so much trouble. At least yeah. let me guard her. If she escapes... We both lose a possible bounty and any short-term gain you hope to achieve. That certainly looks towards Hemi and then towards, over towards Sasha. Sounds applicable to me. You're not going to turn her in, is that correct, Ingot? That is correct. So what are we going to do about your Rodian friend? He is worthless to me. We're not taking him to whatever planet he wants. He can figure it out from here. That is correct. He does not have bounty in the system. He is worthless to me. Then why didn't you let me space him? It was not I who stopped. It was him who begged for his life as he vomited on the floor. Thank you for I simply you. did not want to clean the vomit he made myself. You, you yes, you said that you you professed that quite uh, expressively. Um, hey, Kiga, please go to the quarters in which you have been staying, and uh, us adults are going to uh, take care of the business that we have here. You said you didn't want to come with us, which you are more well more than welcome to do. But, again, this droid now has vowed to protect you. So if you're on this ship, we really can't do that. She says, you, you can't go. You can't leave the ship. It's not safe. Everything out here is, is unsafe. We work for the huts. No, they, no, they no. Th this is different. There's, there's something. There's something. I don't know. You, you can't leave the ship. Just, I, I know, I, there's got to be some way that you can, you can get fuel and, and, and get out of here. You, this is not a play, safe place to be. Kiga, I've been very, you don't know me very well. You don't know us very well. I'm not really a girl you want to cross. So this is what I'm going to tell you, little girl. We are here to do a job so that all of us can still live along with you at this point. If we do not do this job that is on this planet... We have... Do you know who Durga the Hutt is, little girl? Do you know that name? No. Well, um, 
Okay, you've heard the name Jabba the Hutt, right? Yes, I know of the okay. Hutts. Yes, it, it, it's one of his cousins, and just as popular, I mean, as as uh, powerful as he is, if not maybe more. So the thing is this, if we don't do that, they're going to fucking, they're going to kiff and kill us. Do you understand me now? Yeah, I, I okay. do. So, so I don't want to hear any more about how bad things are going to get. If you're going to travel with this crew, it's going to, as, as Hemi has already said, it's going to get worse than what's going to happen out there. And she, and she turns her back to her and stands in front of the little girl and says, let's do what we need to do to prepare for this, you know, for our time here on, what's the name of the planet? I forget, sorry. Toydaria. On Toydaria. As I said, Miss Kiga, please... Either you're going to be traveling with us, or you're going to go to the quarters and lock yourself in there have you, as you've done before. And she turns much more business and cold than she usually is. And Kiga just looks at you just with so much sadness in her eyes, and she says, And if I stay here, then... The Empire may have come and find and search the ship and then find you. And Did you think of that possibility, Miss Kiga? The droid will have to stay if I stay no. here? He is coming with us. He is our security, which hence would make him your security because you're now part of this crew because you just volunteered to do so. Why are we still talking about this? She's I coming with us. He's coming with us. We're all going. We have a job to do. I, we can I either really... sell her to the Empire or she can... Join the crew. Up to you, kid. That's as much as you're going to get from us. And you see how I tried to say that much more. Than <laughs> you. Hemi is much more straight to the point. That is the gravity of the situation, little girl. Either you're going to join our crew, come with us, and take care of business, or y yeah. And uh, like with Hemi's words, and 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 you know, with what you said there, she kind of stiffens up a little bit. And you can see that sort of fire in her eyes again. And she says, fine, I'll come with you. I'll do my best to, to be part of this crew and to help you. But don't call me little girl anymore. If I'm part of the crew, call me Kiga. Then don't act like a little girl and I won't have to do that. Thank you, Kiga. Fine. And, 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 and you know, she, she, she treats her just as if she's one of the, the other things. Then can you do me a favor and go get the Rodian... And tell him to bring his, his his smelly self up here because he's Rodian smell bad. Okay, and she Thank goes <laughs> goes to to get the Rodian. So this is uh, what is what is the move here? Are we going to go take care of the bounty first so that we can pay the fee, and then because that would make it a little less painful. Um, and then we'll take care of the registration, then we'll find our contact. Do you think so? Because I think that's the order to do things in because we want to make sure we're good for the way out. And to I that, that, that point, through... you actually, before, sorry, Sasha, before you um, respond, you actually see out of the viewport because you're, you're, you're in your docking bay at this point, and you basically see this impatient customs official standing there, like basically waiting, you know, for you to come out. Um, there are two stormtroopers, but that's pretty like common for a customs inspector, you know, just as like security or whatever. And then it looks like there's a crew, like if you know, there uh, obviously in case you had any cargo that needed to be offloaded or anything like that. Um, so they're sort of waiting for you, and you see this guy like with this clipboard, right? And he's and and you know he's just waiting there, just like seeming to get more and more frustrated. <laughs> Tapping his pen on the clipboard. Yeah. He's just there. No, I got you. Well, I don't think we have uh, a whole lot of choice, Zaya. We got to deal with customs before we can do anything else. Well, we're not right, right. on the ship. We're going to have this conversation off of it. Perhaps you deal with customs. I can take the bounty and turn it in and remove the girl from the ship so the customs agent does not find her. I'm not so worried about that. Um, yes, but I, I, I will certainly deal with the custom agent. That's not a problem. Um, Part on the ship there, Sash, and, you know, you and Hemi can stabilize it so that we're proper when we're here on the ground. 
and I will go out and talk with the uh, with the agent. Um, actually, Ingot, I would like for you to accompany me, just as a security as usual. Affirmative. And as they walk out the door, I'm assuming that the Rodian and uh, Kiga yep. kind of run into us. Yep, they're right there. Um, make yourself gone. That's all she says to him, and then walks off the ship. He says, no problem. I was planning on it anyway. Well, you're lucky that you're not uh, sucked in the vacuum of space, you, 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 you kiffin' idiot. Get away from me. And she walks off the ship. And Kiga kind of holds back. She's just waiting to see, like, what what's going to happen at this point. Um, and, re- and as the door is opening, so on and so forth, she mm-hmm. looks back and goes, hey, new crew member, if you want to come with us and see how things are done, you can do so. Okay. And she still waits. She's looking at Ingot at this point. And Hemi is just kind of scuttling around where all of his parts were kind of left out where he was originally working. And he's just kind of taking some of his equipment that is in his standard slicer pack. And he's just kind of repacking it and strapping it to his waist and kind of heading off late off the ship. Sasha finishes securing the ship, whatever all that is, powering things down and, um, you know, securing things and exits behind it, last behind everybody else. And how about Ingot? Uh, he's, he's just following Zaya, and he's uh, not saying he's not really saying anything. He's just going along. Sure. Okay. And then Kiga would accompany you, um, sticking fairly close to Ingot, who has said that he would essentially guard her. Um, but like she and she, she kind of like she has this uh, this like vest, and it doesn't have any sleeves, but it's got a hood on, and she puts the hood up over her head. She's kind of hunched down a little bit. Style? What's that? What's her cleanliness level? Sorry, I I couldn't hear you. Cut is out she there. Clean? For a does she smell like we? I mean, she's been in the ship for days. Oh yeah, she would smell just as bad as as all of you guys, except you know, if not worse. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we we exit the ship, and I very confidently walk up to the uh, to the agent, and uh, he looks at you. And I mean, this is definitely this sort of like prim, you know, imperial customs officer. And you know, for a minute, you can you can kind of see um, the stormtroopers' heads, like they they're focused on Zaya, right? And then they turn and they look at Ingot and the rest of the crew, and then back to Zaya, and then the crew, and then the the customs inspector is like sort of looking at his clipboard, but he's trying to, uh, you know, kind of take everything in while looking at his his thing and he says so madam are you the owner of this ship i am the new owner of the ship that's correct um and i am the ship's captain uh my name is zaya kromara as i told the uh and should have been Yes, yes, yes. We got the manifest. I, I understand that there is a matter of the uh, expedited travel and docking fees you were made aware yeah. of that, correct? Yes, we're very aware. It's a thousand credits. Is that correct? It is. Will you be making payment now? Um, I could. Is it something that we could do before we leave? Uh, this is something that you can do right now. Otherwise, you will have to come with us, and we can, uh, f- you know, fix it with the Bureau of Ships and Services. But of course, that will yeah. take much longer, and will probably she- be much more expensive. Yeah, yeah, she 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 looks down into her equivalent of a purse or whatever, you know what I mean, and takes out the uh, the stick that uh, Cordelli gave us and does what she has to do to transfer a thousand credits. How many stormtroopers are there? Just two. No, thank you. <laughs> um, and I think that you know, as you kind of hand over the the credit stick, and you know, the officer plugs it in, does his thing, you know, transfers the credits, and then uh, he hands you this piece of like flimsy plast or whatever, and uh, he says, "Okay, this uh, this will this will be good for your time while you're here on Toydor, uh, Toydaria, but you want to make sure that you get that registration taken care of because I'll tell you, you're gonna have this problem at every single system, okay?" 
Absolutely. Um, the, we can do that here at Tardaya, is that correct? Uh, and he kind of looks around and he's like, listen, I'm going to be straight with you. This this planet, this is a backwater. You don't want to try to deal with that here. You just don't know the reliability. You, uh, I mean... Narshada, they've got they've got a boss office, or you could always head up to the Imperial Shipyard orbiting orbiting Narshada. They could take care of it as well. But I I, I wouldn't trust anything here. And he kind of looks around, and you can see Toydarians kind of uh, floating all over the place, right? You know, flying this way and that. Um, and he kind of you can tell that he doesn't he does not like it here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for the information, uh, customs officer. Um, I'll take it in consideration, and uh, it was a pleasure doing business with you today. You as customs well. Customs officer, where is the bounty office, please? And he, he kind of um, he says, it's just down at the far end of the square. You can't miss it. And you can see the, like, the big imperial symbol on it. You know, it would be the customs house and the bounty office. This is probably... They probably have all of the official Imperial um, stuff in one building because it's it's Toydaria and it's fairly small, but you can you can't miss it. Um, but he he does say before you leave. Oh, uh, do you have any cargo that you need to declare or anything that you need offloaded? No. Thank you for asking. Very well. Then I'll be on my way. Any. It's a pleasure doing business with you today, and. She she starts walking towards the office, in which we have to go for the bounty, um, and uh, but walks slow enough so that the crew can be near her, uh, so we can talk. Okay. Um, well, that was fairly painless. Um, I think that was the right choice for our yeah. situation. Um, I'm not so sure that I agree with his sentiment on not trying to. Uh, fix the registration here that's actually kind of maybe what we want to do because um as long as it's do you think it would really be done improperly and then you hear bleep 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 and your calm your personal comms and all of you guys have this because you're all sort of in tune to the free, same frequency they all start bleep 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 as you're getting sort of an incoming calm message kind of like that um yep and uh she looks to Hemi. Do you know who that is? And Hemi, you would know that this is the contact um, that you were to ha met, meet here, Domdes. It's our contact. That's what we're here for. Who's going to take the call? How about you handle this one, Hemi? Done. Um, and he... Raises his hand, hits the accept button, and then and puts the call through. All right, and I will apologize. My Toydarian is not nearly as good as Anthony's, but I'm going to do my best. Um, and uh, you get on the other end. Hello, my friends. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. And this is maybe when you find out that Hemi has traveled a little bit as he does his best toy Darian. Hello. My, it's not good. He's he's yeah. not very good at it, but he's heard it. Hello, my friend. Uh, you, I believe, are the one we are to speak to. Zaya giggles when she hears him do that. <laughs> and, and so does he. <laughs> yes, yes, this is Dom D's. Yes, it is. Who is it that I am speaking to? Dondies, this is Hemi. I work with the Huts. Ah, excellent. Excellent, my friend. Are you on planet? Yes, just arrived. Very good, very good. Listen, meet me in the merchant district. In the center, you will find a great pavilion. Meet me there. I will I will be and he kind of describes this like uh, I would be wearing this outfit with a with a fedora and a green a green waistcoat. You cannot miss me. But uh, please let me know what what does your crew look like? Hemi freezes for a second. Um. And yeah, we'll we'll uh, make sure the comms aren't picking him up, and he'll say, "Caution, odd question." 
we will be blending in quite well. It will be very hard to see us. It sounds as though it will be very hard to miss you, though, my friend. Allow me to look for your fedora. We will find you. He says, yes, yes, this is fine. This is fine. If if I do not... Uh... If I do not hear from you in an hour, I will call you back on this frequency, okay? Perfect. Excellent. Pleasure doing business with you. Of course. <laughs> Click. Blip. And, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so Now, you... why in the universe would he want to know what the rest of us look like? I don't Usually. like that one bit. And I look Usually at Kika. Usually that's to make sure you know who your prey is. Well, so I think we should to... range for fueling before we get moving. Can you do that, Sasha? Sure. And we should deliver the bounty to ensure we get credits before any ambush occurs. Yes. Very much so. Um... Do you? I don't think going singularly is a very good idea. Who would you like to go no. to do? Uh, I'm gonna tell you what. Why don't? Uh, I'll take the droid and the child to the to the bounty to office the, to the bounty office if if you like, and then you could accompany Sasha. That sounds like a plan. That is exactly what I was thinking. We're on the same page for once, Emmy. He chuckles. <laughs> and get old nod. Yeah. Split the party! Woohoo! Split the party! <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. she gives Hemi an assessing look. She's wondering about the two people who want to Sell the turn world. in all the bounties, taking all the bounties to the bounty office. And Kiga's thinking the same thing. And actually, I think, um, Sasha, you would feel her kind of come up next to you. Um, and she actually, like, puts her hand in your hand and kind of squeezes it. And I squeeze it back. And I look at Zaya. You know, there's no reason for Kiga to go to that bounty office. She can stay with us. That's fine. The girls and the boys can uh, kind of split up and we'll meet back up in a few. And I'll just kind of look at, at Zaya and just look at, at Ingot and be like, is he a boy? Or, okay. <laughs> Gender neutral. <laughs> Non-binary. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, and then it's funny because, uh, because I look over and I go, well, you're binary, but eh, the same thing. It doesn't matter. And... and uh, Binary code, perhaps. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just introduced gender politics into Star Wars. <laughs> oh, no. What have we done? <laughs> no, but it's all good. Um, so, okay. So, you, so as you guys are kind of doing that, um, Zaya, you kind of catch across the square, kind of standing outside of the, uh, sort of near the, the Imperial office, but not exactly like in front of the entrance, you see basically it's an entourage, right? It's 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 these well-dressed people. And in the middle of them is this human in resplendent imperial uniform, dark hair, chiseled jaw, just like the perfect specimen of a human male. And across the square, he catches your fit, your, your gaze as well. And it's as if like, I don't know, like sparks or something like he is like transfixed at your image and he's, he's looking at you and it's like all these people are talking and it's, it's like one of those scenes in a movie where like time slows down and there, and you can't hear anything, but maybe like your heartbeat and all you can see is each other. And then he kind of, he looks at you from across the square, Zaya, and he kind of just nods his head like why don't you come over here and before you do anything sasha you feel kiga's hand on you know like holding your hand like squeeze really hard and she starts muttering 
Oh, something's something's gonna happen. Is it, we gotta be careful. Okay, okay, I I hear ya. Zaya, maybe we should be on about our business. She um, and not hearing uh, Sasha at all is just kind of starting to walk that direction, like unknowingly even. Zaya. Um, Zaya. Yeah. Wrong way. <clears throat> we need to go this uh, way. Are Are you certain? Yes. Do you, you see that man? Yeah, and I don't think that's anything good. I don't think that's anything we want to mix up with. It... Let's get our business taken care of. Oh. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, he, he's pretty. I know. No, there's pretty, and then there's that. Um, he, I... I reach out and tug on her arm. Come on, let's get some fuel. And again, I don't want to be without fuel if we have to exit fast again. <laughs> and if I don't get some fuel, I might be have an issue myself. Girl. And I would say yeah. that the the words sure. start to fade out, Zaya, as as yeah. again, it's like that same phenomenon, right? Where it's just like you totally zoom in and focus on him, and he he kind of cocks his eyebrow a little bit, and kind of gives you this playful little like smile, like what? You don't want to come this way? Yeah, I I gotta I. I gotta go see about this guy. You, you and Zaya. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, sweetie. You, you don't, and... don't you do it. I, but I want to do that. I know, I know, Zaya. I know, honey. But we got to stick together right now. But you got, you got Miss Force sensitive with you. And she's got the eebie-jeebies from this whole thing. Let's go. That's all she's been talking about since we got down there. I got it. I, give Zaya. Five, Zaya. Five minutes. Five minutes I look, I look you minutes. right in the eye. You just said back on the ship that she could come in handy. And now that she's given us advice, you don't want to listen to any of it. You can't have it both ways, girl. And at that point, you start to see a couple of the people. They look like official somebody uh, from his entourage. They start making their way towards towards the party, towards the crew. I don't they don't look malicious or anything. They're just coming towards you. Uh, Sash? Let's go see about that fuel <laughs> before we get tangled in yet another mess. And Kiga at this point is like, Sasha, we got to get out of here. We can't stay yeah. here. Yeah, let's go. Come on, Zaya. Wait, wait. And, and Zaya squats down. Uh, I he got, pull he got... Zaya in the right direction. I start just tugging on her. You now, Kika's much shorter than than us. Is that correct? She's like yeah. the size of an eye. Right? Yeah. Okay. And she squats down and looks her straight in the face. And she lifts up her little hood a little bit and goes, Now, again, we've talked about your sensitivity. Now, do you see that it's bad for you two or bad for me? It's bad for all of us. If I may, possible advantage here. Zaya keeps Imperial Customs or High Official occupied. Deliver bounty, Hemi and I can, while Sasha feels Wait. the ship with the child. Uh, and I'm sorry. Hawaii, the only uh, one that's making a ton of sense here is the droid that doesn't have anything. I'm sorry, I just... I just want to make sure me and Ingot are still with them. I thought we had yeah. already split. So this sort of, sorry, yeah. So this sort of all happened, like, as you guys were about to split up. Uh, oh, I yeah. misunderstood. Sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. That was my bad. I didn't explain that well enough. But, yeah, it was sort of one of those weird, like, movie moments where, you know, it's like it focuses in on <laughs> this weird, you know, scene. And the rest of you guys are sort of suspended until, you know, the camera comes back. And then, yes, then uh, okay. that conversation started then, to happen. Yeah. Uh, then... Seeing these stormtroopers coming, Hemi's gonna be like, Zaya, Zaya, what are you doing? What are you even right, arguing about? He's his empire. They... No, well, they're they're not stormtroopers. They're definitely imperial officials, though. Um, imperials. Yes. Though. Yep. The, these these people are imperials. We need we have business to take care of. We can't get entangled in imperial 
bed sheets or otherwise. We need to go. I must also interject one last time. I believe you are under the influence of this child. Her force capabilities are known to influence humanoids to make rash decisions. As the only droid here, I recommend you take her advice with caution. She may be influencing you with the force. And she like, I mean, as soon as he says the force, like you can just, uh, Sasha, you could probably feel it like through her body. Kiga is like pan- almost on the verge of panic. Like, you know, he's just saying the force out in the, you know, in public. And she's like, oh. Uh, you didn't miss hardly anything. Um, you, 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 just more uh, um, Hemi's on your side, pretty much saying that you know. I mean, we saying that, um, and that the force sensitive user uh, may be influencing our feelings. Um, okay. So uh, I I I might have to agree with the droid on this. Um, I'm not being forced to feel anything, but what I do further with that. I'm sorry. Just try tugging. Not... Sash, please do me a favor and go fuel the ship with, with our new crew member. I'll be back in five minutes. Oh, Saya, you're... Five minutes, Sash. I'll see you in a couple. She starts walking that direction. So Chris, you were cut, you're cutting out there for me. I don't know if anybody else was was hearing that or not, but I wish she said she was gonna go. She was she was objecting to the yeah. decision. Oh no! What are you doing? Yeah, I I don't know. I can't hear anything from from Chris right now. I'm not sure if you guys can or not, but yeah. She's certainly, yeah. No, I no. can't hear her right now. Oh, wait. She went green. Yeah, she went green. But I didn't hear anything. Yeah. I don't think we can hear Sasha. So that might be um, a, a good opportunity. Uh, I feel like... Oh, it, well, so at, at this point, those Imperials now are probably within, you know... 10 meters of you they're very close and and they don't again they don't look menacing at all um but they look impatient and they look like they're annoyed that they have to come over here <laughs> right uh, so hem if you could take the bounty along with the bounty holder and go take care of the business um sash please feel the ship let me talk to these fine imperial gentlemen here and everything will be all fine I'm Sasha Kamara. If I can't handle a man, who can? And so because we can't hear Sasha right now, we're going to say that Sasha goes along with that plan, <laughs> um, oh. at least for now. Uh, because also because Kiga is like, we have got to go. Like, we've got to get out of here. And you guys would, you guys would, would uh, Hemi and, um, uh, and Inga, you would be like, well aware of this as well. <laughs> I'm sure I had to do a kiff. And- he said something not yeah, nice to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Yeah. So for anyone watching, um, Sasha's less than pleased. Very much so. But that's nothing new between her and Zaya. It's not, it's not new things. Um. <laughs> so what are the rest of... Hemi and, and Ingot, what are you guys going to do? Are you just going to head over to the... Uh, excuse me, to the um, bounty office? That would be my intent. Yeah, as fast as I can. Ingot will try to be extremely fast with delivering the bounty. Okay. And uh, Sasha and Kiga will go off um, to get fuel. Um, Ingot would like to ask Hemi uh, something, though, in in, uh, route. Yeah, for sure. In fact, what we're going to do right now, we're going to stick with with Hemi and Ingot. Uh, We'll we'll transition to that scene, and then we'll, we'll do all the rest of them. Shortly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah, yes. Yay. Yay. Yes. So, okay. Okay. So just to just to retcon slightly, what did you tell her? 
<laughs> I remember dying to know. I said it looked like he is handling you. Oh, well, you know, I, I hope he does there, girl. Um, I'm seriously and- distrustful of, of the power that he seems to be holding over you. Yeah. And I was I was trying to say prior to that that I was I was tugging on her wrist the whole time trying to pull her back, but I guess I finally had to let her go. Yeah, because yeah, because Kiga is basically pulling on your wrist like we have to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you, so there's kind of a tug of war between a weird tug of war between you pulling me and Kiga pulling you. Yeah. So, um, like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Zai just looks at her. And she takes both hands and puts it around the hand that's tugging her and says, Sweetie, there's no man in this galaxy that is going to give anything over as I promara. Give me so a why problem. can't you resist him? Because I don't want to. You should be <laughs> distrustful, Zaya. I, I see uh, my way of making credits, and it's standing right over there. She says <laughs> very, very loudly. <laughs> and then it's oh, at Lord. this point that those that those um office I mean, they are within like two two or three steps, and Kiga is like about to panic. Like she's starting to actively pull away, like to try to run back to the ship. You could appear pants. <laughs> yeah. And and right. like Sasha, if you don't do something, she will try to pull her hand out of your hand and run. And so I Maya lets go of your your hands. And turns I, around and looks very cute for the guys there, and that's where I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> so and I Sasha's pretty should be pretty strong. So yep. she um keeps a firm grip on Kiga. And I lean down and I whisper in her ear, You're just gonna call more attention to yourself. You need to just calmly go with me and we'll get our fuel. Yes, yes. And I look at let's go, Hemi let's go. And, and we start walking. Okay, cool. And so we'll kick it over I'm to Hemi. To... That those are close to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, basically, what happens is you guys all kind of like, well, Zaya stays there. You go in one direction, and and Hemi and, and Ingot kind of go. I mean, the Imperial buildings are all like within one complex, but they're you know, yeah, you'll kind of split off a little bit. Um, and so we oh, kind of... as we get to where we're about to split again, I look at Hemi. Got that credit stick? And, uh, yeah, he slides it out and says there should be plenty more where this came from. He gives her what's left on it, which should be, I believe, a thousand credits. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So I take that. <laughs> Perfect. And then the, the scene sort of pans over to, you know, almost like an aerial shot over the shoulder of Hemi and Ingot as they're walking towards the bounty office. And what do you Ingot guys do? Would- Inga would turn to Hemi as they're walking, and and again he's trying to move really fast to the bounty office, <clears throat> and he would uh, kind of go, Hemi, thoughts on the girl? It appears the rest of the crew is making quite an unwise decision. And Hemi just kind of rolls over his conversation, and just starts going on and on about how he says. She's going to get herself or the rest of us killed, flirting with danger in the most literal sense of the way possible at every step, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know how Inget responds to that. Understood. Security <laughs> protocols engage. And uh, that's all he's going to say. The security <laughs> protocol? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and, uh,. You guys make what have it I done? <laughs> to the to the bounty office, and um, you you walk inside and you see this sort of bored looking imperial um behind the desk, you know, kind of just sitting there. Uh, you know, all all within the office here, there are screens with like the bounty boards, just you know, scrolling the images of of the local bounties. And um, as you come in, this guy kind of looks up at you. And this Imperial is, is uh, you know, he's not the trim, fit military officers that you guys have seen. You know, this guy is a little bit, you know, pudgy. He's, you know, he's got a little more, um, he's a little more slovenly. And he kind of looks up at you and he says, what can I help you with? 
here to deliver a bounty. And I would show I would show my identification and uh give him the Trandoshan bounty. You mean the head? Affirmative. <laughs> you plop the head down on his desk? Yeah. Okay. And I, I would say to him, Is your superior here? Request an audience immediately. And uh he kind of shuffles back a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Bringing me a whoa. hold on a second. Ingen, 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 why do you need a supervisor? What are you doing? To ensure this head is delivered properly. Just get paid. And, and uh, he's going to kind of turn and say, is your supervisor available? And he looks at you and he's like, and then he, and then he looks over to you, Hemi, and uh, he says, is, is his programming messed up? What? What is going on here? I, I, I don't have a supervisor. I'm the only guy here. Hemi's going to put his hands up and just say, he, he, he's going to be like, he's the bounty hunter. I, I fix computers. Um, just say you're the supervisor. It, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. I got you. And then he looks back to you and he says, no, I, my supervisor's not here. Cause I, I'm the supervisor, but l- listen, let, let me just get my scanner. And he kind of ducks down behind his desk and you hear this clink, clank, crash, boom, you know, whatever. <laughs> and he uh, he pulls out this like thing. Um, and Hemi, you would realize that this is basically it's effectively it's a DNA scanner, right? It's going to it's going to test the, you know, the DNA here to see who this is. Um, and he says, but first, and he kind of looks over your imperial peacekeeping certificate um, and uh, he scans that through the system and he says, OK, OK, th- looks like that's in order. Hold on, and he starts scanning the the head on his desk, and there's complete distaste and disgust <laughs> in his mouth. And uh, and then finally, he's like, "Huh?" He's like, "Well, yeah. I mean, it looks like there was a an old bounty on this guy, but uh, I'll tell you, I mean, the imperial bounty. I mean, we we can give you maybe three thousand credits, but you know." It just between me and you. You take this out to uh, looks like I don't know. Looks like there's some private bounties on here. It doesn't say who. Uh, not on my records anyway. But um, you can get a lot more on the private bounty. Hemi's gonna try to slip between Ingot and like the desk, and he's just gonna kind of like <laughs> like put his hand up and be like, "Listen, listen, between me and you." There might be a few things wrong with this program. I, I wouldn't really make him upset. Like, so, listen. Say, say you give us nine. He thinks that's about what it's worth, and then, and then, you can have someone else go drop him off for the private bounty. It's just a head. He's not not going anywhere, right? And he just kind of like knocks on the skull. He's not moving. <laughs> that's awesome. Easy package. All right, I think uh, I'm going to have you make <laughs> a negotiation roll here um, because... Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, totally. I'm asking him. Yeah. I, this is, I, th- that's why I was telling him not to piss him off because this is not a great deal for him. He'll probably just break even, but I won't have to let Ingot shoot him, so... Yeah, and in fact, what I'll do because of the uh, the implied threat there, I will let you have a boost dice as well. Um, give me just a second here um, to pull this out here. Okay, and let me get the dice set up. All right, so we're gonna do basically an opposed negotiation roll. Ooh, you're lucky that doesn't apply to uh, to that. Oh, but it's still going to be really hard. Okay, so let's see. Wow. Okay, actually, it's that and that. And then, oh, hell, I'm going to use one of my dark side points. Upgrade it, make it a little harder. I'll give you a boost as well, and go for it. Um, guys, is it okay if I use a light side point? I do not have much skill in negotiation. Do it. Always. Okay. Okay, so I'm using a light side point. 
Great. And I'm going to roll for negotiate. Uh. Oh. So that's a whole lot of failure. Um, but some advantages oh. as well. Okay. So he's definitely not going to go for that deal, but but can you think of any... How do you think you might want to use your advantages? Um, well, tell me if this is too much, but maybe he knows exactly who... I could go to to turn this head in for the private bounty rather than just the vague vagaries that he was giving me before. Interesting. Okay. Oh, great. And uh, roll 20 took away my destiny pool. Good stuff. But we'll figure it out. So, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So let's see. Um, he, he says, no, no, listen, I... I don't want to cause any trouble here, but I just, I can't. I mean, they, you know, they check everything here. I cannot give you nine on a $3,000 imperial or 3000 credit imperial bounty. I just, I would get fired. But, but I mean, look, you know, you just, this, this bounty is, uh, this bounty. I mean, yeah, you'd have to travel into the core, but it's, it's not so bad. I mean, you know, it looks like, uh, looks like you can, in fact, you can just take this right to Coruscant. That's where the bounty's at. Doesn't quite say who, but, uh, well, <laughs> somebody paying that much? I'm, I'm betting Black Sun. And he breathes in. Like, he's already working with Hudson now. This guy's talking about Black Sun. He's just like, uh, does it does it say how much they'll pay? I mean, yeah, it's, it looks like it's a 10,000 credit bounty. Inge will turn yeah. to Happy and say... Black Sun, I do not have the capability to fully ensure we can deal with them successfully. So do we take the three? I don't want you to have to hurt this guy. Customs official, I mean bounty official, what is your security position here with Imperial Security Forces? I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you, like my rank? Negative. Personnel that are available for security assets. Well, I mean... Policing actions. I I could call the garrison if, if something really bad happened. Affirmative. Are you, are you saying I should call the garrison? Affirmative. What? what why? Security violation. And he starts looking around like he's like, what? Yeah, and Hemi's like, Ingot, uh, what are you, what are you doing, friend? Um, I don't, I don't want the garrison here. Uh, if I we really deserve, don't. if we want the credits, we can ensure the security of our crew and the positive deposit of credits in our account. No, 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 no. You saw a 10,000. You probably saw the Black Sun's bounty. Let's not get crazy here. There's, Look, take the three, or we could fly to Coruscant, pocket the head, uh, you know, in a bag or something. I don't know. We could get it there. Black Sun's tough, but if you really want the 10G, we could go. We can go. I would just take the three. And you will uh, take the three. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you could have gone hard harder at that. I just I, Hemi's a coward. No, <laughs> no. He, uh, he he has something he wants to tell the guy though. Okay. As he puts the head down, he says, uh, "Still, please contact the garrison commander." For for what what purpose? I have a message for him. And what is the message? It is classified. And he, he kind of looks at his data pad again, and he says, uh, and he kind of looks to Hemi, and then he looks back to you, Ingot, and he says, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think, you, you don't seem to have the kind of clearance that would say you have classified information, and I can't just call the garrison commander for any for any old bounty hunter. 
You, you're going to have to give me more than that. I'm sorry. I require assistance from the garrison. Then I, I would suggest you go to the garrison. They should be able to help you. Point me to them, please. And he says they're they're right over there. Just just a couple of a uh, couple of doors down. Fine, thank you. And he'll just like leave after he gets his three thousand credits and head there. Yeah, he transfers the three thousand credits, and you got your uh, you got your thing there, and you start heading yeah, to Hemi, the garrison. Yep. Hemi was like leaning on the counter, and like now at this point, he's talking about going to the garrison. He's just like rapping on the counter, like, "Okay, let's go. Give me the credits." Yeah, absolutely. And he does. And and you actually see kind of Hemi as you're um as you're exiting. Maybe you know, you kind of look back, um, and you're not quite sure why, but you see him pulling out from you know, he's like he's kind of shaking a little bit and he pulls out from inside his pocket this black cigarette. And you know immediately what that is. That's a death stick. And this is very un unlikely for an Imperial official to do that. But he's he's like he's he's rattled, um, and so he pulls that out and he lights it. And do you just walk Hemi, out the door? Hemi, like, I hmm, I feel like I kind of want to want to roll some sort of a. Ch- I always have a hard time with when I'm thinking something and when my character's thinking something. I want to make sure that he would be thinking it. Um, what are you thinking well, he's my, thinking? <laughs> um, my intellect is really high, so actually I think I could roll with this. So Hemi would kind of see that and be like super startled for a second. Like like you said, he recognizes and he knows what it is. Like watching someone, you know, ritually kill themselves. So he's goes to like kind of lunge forward to kind of like tell Ingot. And as he does, he kind of thinks for a second and remembers... I need to talk to the garrison. Who is your supervisor? And he just stops and doesn't walk for a few moments. As Ingot kind of gets a little bit farther ahead, and he just kind of swallows deeply and just, what have I gotten myself into? And starts to follow, but keeps a little bit of distance, more so than before. Okay, sure. And so we'll we'll transition the scene over to um, the basically you don't even necessarily Sasha um you wouldn't necessarily even need to deal with the imperials to get fuel what you would do is you would go to the um you know the spaceport sort of central command um and you know it's basically like an area where you could get anything you need for ships right like you'd get fuel you could get you know if you needed to requisition repairs whatever and so you know you would go to this like desk and there's this little there's this droid there sitting behind the desk um he says, how can I help you today? I need to arrange for some fuel for that uh, ship out there we just landed. Very good. Please transmit your credentials. And he kind of hands you this uh, thing. And you you could. You would all have the, the credentials. Your transponder code. Okay, so I do that. Great. He says, okay, very good, Mr. M- M- Miss Shepard. <laughs> that'll do and uh it says okay and it's um to get a full thing of um fuel i don't know it's 500 credits um so you'll you'll be able to do that great great and at this point like kiga is bouncing up and down on her feet just you know like not just like you know like an anxious kid would do kind of um, mm-hmm. and, but she keeps looking this way and that, this way and that, like what, you know, what's going on, what's going on. And then, um, she's like, you know, if, if, if we got the fuel, I, I think we need to, uh, we, we, we need to get out. We, we need to get back with, with the rest of the crew. I think we need to stay together. Uh, I agree. Uh, so I, uh, head out. Let's, let's go, let's go meet up with Hemi and and ingot and i head out and i just um kind of uh wait outside the office door where they went in um i don't go into the building i just kind of wait there for them and i turn and look to see what's going on with zaya yep absolutely and so the scene kind of shifts where 
again, we're getting this sort of aerial view and you can see you're kind of all converging um, on the same area, although Zaya is still standing there talking to the guys and you can see she's starting to make her way um, with the two men over to the entourage. And you, as you're coming out, um, I think Kiga immediately just stops and Sasha, you would walk a few steps ju just by sheer, fo you know, the force of your body just moving, right? Um, before you realized what happened. And Inga, you would you would be sort of focused on getting to the um, the garrison, but you also because your security protocols were sort of up. You know, you 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 have this sense. Your processors are telling you something isn't right here. Um, and, and Hemi, you would feel this as well as you, you know, you, you've been around enough shady people and you're already on edge. You can just feel it. You can sense the scene. Something is, is about to happen. And before you can even do anything, you feel this rumble and then you hear this and you guys would see in in the crowd where the um, where the imperial official was. It was just the explosion, and you hear these screams. And at first, it's 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 uh, it's really close to you, and you realize that it's Kiga. And it it's a split second before the explosion goes off, and then the explosion happens, and you hear the screams, and you hear everybody running, and there's 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 smoke, and there's fog everywhere, there's debris, and there's rubble, and you guys have been basically thrown to the ground um, in the, uh, you know, in this whole, like, cacophony of, of destruction or whatever, and you all black out as you kind of hit your head. Um, Ingot, you, your processors are imme are overwhelmed right now to the point that you have to shut down to protect your, your sort of core programming, um, <laughs> gotcha. at least temporarily. And I want to take a quick like five minute break here. And then we'll come back and resolve this scene. No. Was, it, was the explosion by Zaya and the guy? That's what you would presume. Oh, she's bat. She's Shazbot, Criff. <sighs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's take five, um, and we'll meet back here in a couple of minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll resolve things. Great, cool.
Oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? Got some explosions. Oh man. Yep, it's about to get real. This is gonna get crazy, I bet. Uh -huh. Oh, stop. The Pope always on the scene. Oh man, it's yeah. It's gonna get it's gonna get real. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna mess somebody up here. Like, <laughs> I feel like mm -hmm. he, he was like, I'm pissed. I'm not getting my ten thousand. Yep, he's mad. <laughs> yep. Pa you know, I'm gonna have to explain this to Papa, and he's not gonna like it. Oh man. Good stuff. I was really wondering like how what you guys were going to do cuz I um <clears throat> I'm like I I was telling a couple of people it's like I pretty much set up like a beginning scene and then like some you know, names and, and some ideas or whatever that I have. But, like, <clears throat> I largely just kind of roll with, with you know, and react to what you guys do. So I was like, huh, what are they going to do with the uh, with the ship first? And I don't know. And I was like, all right, you handled that well. He paid the bribe. That was the smart thing to do, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know. No, I like that. That's the best type of gameplay where the, the best type of gameplay is where the players and the DM don't know what's going to happen, kind of. Yeah. Know what I mean? But they're both willing to roll with it. Totally, totally. That's yeah. That's why I love it because I'm like, I'm I, like I have no idea what's gonna happen. I mean, I know a little bit, right? Like I know just enough because I, you know, there's like this big thing that is gonna happen, but like that's it, you know. And all the rest of it, I'm like, oh, what are they gonna do? Are they yeah. gonna foil my plans? Hey guys, sorry. I'll just be like another two minutes. My my little one got up. Yeah, no worries. Sasha's not going to come back. She's like, nope. I sense something. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting um, after this to uh, to see where you guys go because it'll, it'll be. I I mean, now we're pretty we're you know we're pretty much in the sandbox at this point. <clears throat> so I like it. Sweet, I love it. I know. I was really hoping you would be like, "Yeah, okay, let's let's we'll go into the core. We'll get that ten thousand. Uh, well, the black sign being that yep. that's specifically my obligation. It's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yep. He didn't know exactly if it was black sun, but he's like a big old bounty coming from somebody in the, you know, in Coruscant. He's like, well, in Coruscant, I don't know, man. That's some crazy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know. For a bunch of criminals to head to course on us, and I don't, I, that's crazy stuff. Yep. Well, is that typical for bounties? Yeah, well, so, yeah, it can be. It just depends because, and I, I think I remember when I initially set this one up, I said this had a big private bounty and a smaller sort of imperial bounty. Um, and so that will occasionally happen. Um more totally so out in the sense. outer rim, uh, especially yeah, totally with things sense. like the huts. Yeah, because some bounty hunters will only take private bounties, but they're not official bounties. So if you were to ever get caught by the Empire, it's technically illegal. Um, where this one is technically a legal bounty because there is an Imperial bounty on it. And so, you know, he, he provided his, um, you know, his Imperial peacekeeping certificate, right? And, and was like, I'm collecting my bounty. <laughs> You know, and the guy was nice and gave it to you, even though you just wow. gave him like this guy's head on the, on the desk. But it worked. <laughs> nice, nice. So we'll just wait for uh, for Rory to get back here, and then we'll we'll pick it up. Kika tried to warn you. She, you know, 
Kiga. Yeah, if only Zaya would listen to somebody besides herself once in a while. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. Right? <laughs> Fucking shit my pants over here. Leave me alone, Chris. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys aren't any uh, any strangers to explosions. Well, at least, you know, Hemi isn't. Um, Did, so the, the explosion, would it have blown up the building? Or, like, it just a blast, like, an EMP? And then, like, I'm assuming, like, the EMP blast that follows some bombs kind of... Is that, like, so what we felt? It, it would have sort of been um, hard, but I'll just tell you... It, it, Imagine if a suicide bomber did their thing in the middle of a crowded square. Damn. Mm-hmm. It's getting real. Mm-hmm. So probably probably not enough to like take down the whole building, but definitely some damage. <coughs> they were looking to destroy organic targets. <laughs> Sasha left out and get it. He has, I guess, he has no heart. <laughs> heart, to heart to be had. I am trying to role play him exactly how an assassin George would be role played. Though. <laughs> no, it's great. I think it works. No, you're doing great, dude. All right. I think what I'll do is I'll um I'll start kind of bringing the scene back and um and then w when uh, when Hemi's back we'll uh we'll fully get back into it. But um, Ingot, I imagine you would be the first to kind of uh, your your programming would kick back in, um and I imagine like the you know what it would almost be like you know the the little like irises like would open up you know and. I would imagine you might see like some some code or whatever going across your vision, and then it's like, doom, you know, and now you're back into consciousness, and you know your processors are starting to to come back online, and everything's, you know, and you kind of look around, and you are covered in a little bit of like rubble, um, but mostly uh organic matter as well, um, and you're 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 actually on the ground. Like like kind of seated, like propped up against something. Um, you're fully functional. All your you know your systems are telling you that you're fully functional, but um, but you uh, you're you're looking around and it's hard to really see a lot because there's a lot of like smoke and there was a, there was fog anyway from um, you know this planet's very foggy anyway. And so, you know, you're kind of looking through this, like, gray kind of haze, and all you can hear is this, like, ah, ah, you know, from all over the place, just organics, like, screaming out, saying, you know, in, in pain, basically. Um, and you realize that the, the form that is, like, on you, the organic person that's on you, is Hemi, um, but you can see his chest rise and fall, so he's still breathing, but he's currently unconscious. Okay, I try to get him uh, unconscious if possible. Or, like, slap him around. Okay. Um, yeah, I was like, I'm... unconscious. I got that covered. Yeah. <laughs> I am fully unconscious. <laughs> so all of a sudden, um, Hemi, you feel like this, this hard, sharp sort of pain on your face, and it's enough to wake you up, and you realize that, that Ingot is, like, sort of half slapping you, half poking you, and you let out this cough, you know... <laughs> Um, as like the smoke is just sort of choking your lungs um, and you open your eyes and they're just burning as like this, this, you know, this smoke and this fog are all around you. And for a minute, you can't really see. You kind of like, you know, hit the, the, the metal hand that's like hitting you on the head, just kind of reflexively like, get it, you know, stop or whatever. And then um, you, you, you realize like your entire body aches and you kind of you you finally come back to consciousness and you know fully and and you you just hear all around you these moans and screams of pain and you can you can sort of sense movement around you um but it's very hard to kind of piece any 
any single sight or sound together. Um, and there's this just ringing in your ears. And what do you do? <laughs> yeah. He's trying to wipe at his eyes, get the dust and the particles away so it doesn't burn when he opens them, but he can only manage to like get one and a half open. And he sees and gets says, what, what happened? Where did the, where did the blast come from? Regression. <sighs> Blast radius, and I'll I'll start scanning the area to see uh, kind of what I can decipher from what's going on. Yeah, and again, it, it's sort of hard to tell without um, trying to u- do more of like a visual scan uh, and an auditory scan. Your your sensors um, are very confused, but you can tell. Based on the the playback of your you know of your memory banks, you can tell that the blast radius was centered fairly close to that really sort of pomp uh, or uh, that imperial guy that that Zaya was all you know moon eyes over. Okay, um, Ingit will walk start walking back out the building. I'm just gonna glance at that desk where I dropped the head to see if. What does that look like? Is that guy dead or is he alive? No. So the bla- so the radius wasn't that. It, it wasn't enough to um to go that far. Like you guys had kind of gone a few feet away. This was more of a centralized blast. So the the main sort of s- the square uh, between all these buildings. It's sort of like a like a plaza or whatever that would you know kind of like a you know like a marketplace kind of thing. Um, is this the same plaza that we were supposed to meet? The toy diary in it? No, this is not particularly okay. um, the market district. This is just like if you've ever been into like a capital city or like a like a you know like an imperial not an imperial a government facility. A lot of the time they'll have their government buildings like centered around some sort of like plaza or mm-hmm. whatever. That's kind of what like this was like. With a statue in the middle. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Got it. And so and the that's blast where came you from are. the the blast came from the plaza or towards the ship. Like where Zaya was with that guy. Yep, exactly. Okay, so I guess I'll head over towards uh, Zaya where she was last. Yeah. Yeah, and Hermie would, um, he's, uh, I, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Ingot has better senses than he does right now. So he kind of just like sees the movement, puts one hand down, lifts himself up, and just tries his best to follow Ingot's. Okay, absolutely. And so you kind of do that and... As you're sort of making your way over there, um, Ingot, you can see now the square is actually full of Imperial stormtroopers. Um, now, not not a huge amount. There's probably you know they've probably opened the garrison into this square here, so there's probably about six squads or so, probably anywhere from you know twenty to to forty Imperial stormtroopers and a couple of officers. Um, and they're 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 largely basically uh, crowd control, right? They're they're moving people. Um, they're picking up, you know, the those that are dead or injured, and they're moving them. And they're 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 basically like processing people. And it, and you would know that, you know, just sort of the, the what they're gonna do next is start interrogating people. Um, but there's also, you know, just like shocked people just kind of like milling about because there's too many people for the Imperials to to corral all at once. So some people mm-hmm. are just kind of milling about all in a, in a haze and and there's people on the ground all over to your left and to your right, you know, some moaning in pain as they're kind of giving their last, you know, dying breaths. Others are screaming because they're, you know, they have shrapnel or they have some sort of wound that is, that is really painful. Um, and you notice that there is a a clump of people. It looks like they're ringed by Imperial stormtroopers, um, but it looks like there's a group of people basically being cordoned off by these by these Imperials. Presumably, they're alive. Do we see Sasha or Kiga? You actually would see Sasha. Actually, as you're walking, um, Sasha would kind of. Uh, similar to what Hemi experienced, kind of pop up, <coughs> you know, kind of brush her, you know, face off because there was like this rubble and dust in her eyes, uh, you know, lets out this cough and um, kind of as you're walking by, yeah. But you, Inga, and, and Hemi would not see Kiga. Um, 
but you would see Sasha as she's coming to. And Sasha, you, how would you react? You don't quite see them just yet, but you, you're you kind of coming into consciousness and you can feel these you know, this presence near you, these people near you, um, and you just feel pain and this ringing in your ear and the, the, you know, the, your eyes are stinging and you sort of come, your eyes are sort of starting to focus on this like me- blue metallic object in front of you and then behind it something also blue kind of blurry they look vaguely human shaped uh oh I don't hear anything can you guys hear me yep I hear you I can hear you but I can't hear Sasha either yeah, I don't no. think Sasha's that reason. She, <laughs> she may have to drop and come back in. Okay, yeah. How about now? Yep, yep. we got you. Holy cow. I think it's just the weather. I think it's screwing up my internet. Anyway, so, <clears throat> you know, coughing and <clears throat> spluttering. And um, as soon as I kind of mentally get a grip, uh, Kiga, Kiga, and I look around for her and I look up at the guys. Um. And I look around frantically for Kiga. Kiga. And you you can't you, you can't. can't see her not not immediately anyway. What the hu- what the criff? And I um I look to the guys. Do you do you see her? Negative. And uh, I hold no. my hand out for somebody to help me up. I'll, uh, I'll grab her hand. Yeah. And I kind of do that thing, you know, where you assess mentally, like if you're hurt, if things are broken, or if you, right. you're just feeling pain, you know. And and then I look. What about Zaya? And I look off in the direction that we last saw her. And will you guys head in that direction, or are you going to try and look for Kiga first? I'm going to ask uh, Sasha, where is the girl? I don't know. She's got to be here somewhere. And I start looking for her. Okay. Yeah, I could tell them. Uh, I could say that I would look to Sasha and Hemi and say, I can look for the girl and track her. If you look for the other humanoid, Zaya. I I don't know that she'd trust you, Ingot. Maybe it's best you two check on Zaya. My sensors uh, are superior. Zaya right. told me to protect her, and I was left without her, and apparently I failed. She was blasted or worse. All right, well, you look for her then, and Hemi, why don't we go see about Zaya? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's try to find her. Can you even see which way she went? Yeah, I mean, you know you know where Zaya is. She, I mean, it's it's becoming painfully clear at this point that she was heading towards that guy, and that guy was sort of in the center of the blast radius. Um, oh, and, oh. Yeah. And so you can't you can't see Zaya, but at this point the one thing that sort of stands out is that scene of basically this ring of stormtroopers um presumably surrounding somebody. Uh and as you get closer, you can kind of hear a lot of like screaming and moaning um and you can recognize Zaya's voice within that ring of people. And she's definitely in pain. Ew. Zaya! Zaya! Um, and I kind of push my way through to get to her. As you try to do that, the, the stormtroopers basically like take their rifles and kind of like 
hold it up to like you know your like your chest and collarbone area like you know and they basically like push you back like, no admittance that's our friend in there let me through i can help and like a couple of them start aiming their guns at you and and then you hear um like a male voice and says she did come with friends let them through they can't do much more than they've already done <coughs> and then <coughs> excuse me <coughs> they look to each other for a minute and then they they part and they let you and hemi in and you see before you this scene of the 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 man the imperial is basically sitting on the ground. He's got a, a big, like, sort of back to patch on his head and over, you know, covering one eye. Um, and he's got a couple of his attendants with him, basically talking to him and, and uh, you know, con- trying to sort of console him. And he, he looks at you and he just gives you this sort of, um, like, dazed look. And he's, he's, you know, he's angry and he's confused. And then you're, you know, you hear this scream, uh, this painful scream, and you look over and you see Zaya on the ground being attended to by this this like diminutive diminutive like sort of hamster looking um alien uh known as a drawl they're they're that's the species um and she's got a medical kit and she's sort of you know oh please hold on hold on i'll try to ease the pain i'll try to ease the pain and you you see Zaya lying there and like you can tell Sasha you've been out in the wild you've seen animals she's not going to make it and the scene kind of the camera in a sense would pan in zoom in and all the rest of the scene would sort of fade away and it's just Zaya lying on the ground and this 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 doctor, this medical person, trying to help her, and finally she looks down and she kind of throws the you know her her medical um, equipment down on the ground, and she Zaya she looks at you and she says, "I'm so sorry. There's nothing I can do. There's there's got to be something. There there has You're to be something. Thing. What?" And Zaya, you might hear that from you know faintly, but what do you um, what do you say as the as the doctor says this to you? Zaya has her uh, her hands over her abdomen and uh, holding it because it's got a wound that's probably the size of a basketball in the middle of it. Um, and. Uh, She's trying to hold herself, uh, basically hold, hold, hold herself in. Um, and, uh, she's got wounds on her face. She doesn't look beautiful anymore. She, uh, her, her right breast is exposed from, from, from the, uh, from the explosion. The, uh, beautiful tattoo of the, of this, of, uh, of the octopus doesn't really look much like that because most of her right arm is gone. Holy crap. And, uh, yeah, she was pretty much very close to where this, the, the, this bomb went off. Um, she doesn't have much in her. And she can see, kind of, see. Um... And she looks up to Sasha, and with the hand that was holding on her stomach, she just puts her hand up and points it towards her. And then it falls to her chest. Taya, no. Hey, me. No. 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 And Hemi looks over to the good-looking man who had called her over and says, what did you do to her? What did you do here? And you can tell that he, he can't, 
he can't stand up. But he looks over and he st- he kind of tries to like pull himself over towards her and then he he looks at this drawl and the drawl is is weeping a little bit. Um and he says useless backworld aliens that call yourselves doctors you couldn't save her I will guarantee that you'll never work in a proper medical facility ever again and and one of the guys is like governor jacks you we got to get it we got to get you out of here please and he's like no just wait and then he kind of looks at you hemi and he says me i didn't do anything to her it was those those rebels that's got to be who it was they knew i was here i thought thought my security was better than this and he kind of looks to his uh <clears throat> to his men and he says should be you down there instead of her and then he says Get me out of here. And, uh, <clears throat> Corey, why don't you, um, let me know what the doctor says or does or reacts in this case. If you can. Uh Uh-oh, I can't hear Zaya. No, I haven't talked yet. Oh, okay. Look at your Facebook. Yeah, nope, can't do it. Can't do that. Okay. Nope. Um, so, uh, yeah, she comes to for a second while they are talking to the governor. So there's not a lot of attention being paid to the doctor and to Zaya. And Zaya lifts up her hand again as she touches the draw. Um, well, I, uh, wasn't really dead yet. Um, it doesn't sound like you have a job anymore. I, uh, I stand to, uh, those two over there and a little girl and a droid and kind of their captain. You're draw, so that means you're really smart, and I know that. Is that right, Doctor? Doctor, talking to you. Yeah, I know, and she, uh, She's looking at you and she says, not, not sp- smart enough to save you. Can't save everyone. You can't save yourself and you can... They need another person in their crew. And they they need somebody smart like I was. She coughs. <sighs> and some blood spatters out of her mouth and goes on to the doctor. So they need, we're all just a bunch of misfits and knuckleheads and they need somebody to huh. oh. fix them. And if you couldn't fix me, maybe you can fix them. Well, you go with them. This is the, the, the governor said you don't have a job here anymore, so you might as well go somewhere. 
I, I, I mean, I guess if they'll if they'll have me, I'll make it so. And she pushes her in the chest, almost in, inappropriately, and not meaning to for the first time in her life. Um, mm-hmm. and she looks, and she, Sash. Zaya, Zaya, just, just rest, honey. Just, really you couldn't dark. listen to me, could you? But it's really dark, Sash. You're a mess, girl. Well, I'm beautiful. Look, I love you. And she, and she, and she rubs her face and smears blood all the way down it. Look, I'm beautiful as usual. Um, she couldn't help me, but she can help you take that little woman there and get her off this planet because I think that. Uh, yeah, I I understand, Zaya. I understand. And she reaches out to her. And before Sasha can grab her hand, it drops to, to back to her chest again. And just Zaya expires. And, and, I'm gonna play DM, and then I'm going to play DM for a second. Okay, and then go for it. From 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 in the uh, the crowd, you see the visage of a, another person that's not much taller than the draw woman standing right next to you. And Kiga walks up and looks down at the ground, looks over at the man that. Zaya thought was so attractive, who was just jacked up as he's getting picked up, and maybe even by some medical facility, uh, something like that. Because if he's the governor of, of, of Trandosia, then I'm sure he's that they would be very quickly responding. Um, and uh, she looks up and she goes, I told you. I, t- I told you so much. This was the bad thing. But now that's passed. So should we go meet that man? And she's almost cold to it. You can take Kiga, and I will take uh, the doctor. So, Sasha, when <clears throat> Kiga looks to you and says, should we meet that man with this look on her face, like just like dead to the world? What do you? How do you respond to that? No, knowing that there's this little drawl that's that's clearly in in you know emotional pain and Zaya having just just died. <laughs> we and I would imagine that Sasha is just beside herself. But Hemi, you're there as well. And and you would have heard this and seen this. How would you process this scene? He's kind of like for long, he wanted to blame the first person that he saw, but clearly that person is not at fault here. And he just kind of shakes his head. He... This was trouble all the way in, and they're lucky that any of them are getting out off of this planet. But this is a bad way to have this all go down, and he's just kind of in mostly shock. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that really sticks with you is that the governor said you know, this was the rebels. This was the rebels that did this. And uh, 
it just goes to show that even though the rebels are fighting for what they consider to be a just cause, sometimes innocent people get hurt. And um, well, maybe not. Yeah, well, maybe right, not maybe not innocent, maybe not innocent but <laughs> maybe not innocent. People, people <laughs> who uh, who weren't in the fight between the Empire and the and the Rebel Alliance. Um, gotcha. There are no heroes here. Right. Yeah. So, um, the doctor starts to. look over the body more of Zaya, who she doesn't even know the person's name. And, um, she closes her eyes. And she looks up to Pemi, and she says, she was your friend. Is that correct? Yes. She claimed she was your captain. Yeah. She was. It's true. She asked me a really strange thing. Um, now, you know, it's, it's something that I... I'm a physician, yes, and I, you know, people pass away from mortal wounds such as hers, but it's, there's nothing left of the being that made the explosion. So that does go to show what the governor said as well, is that it was probably a suicide bomber from some type of faction um now to say it's the rebels that's very hard to say but um sorry i'm just rambling i my name is pyrene joy what is yours my name is hemi i'd love to chat but we have someone to find meet and get off this planet if you're coming with us you'll have to well, stay tight that's fine um where don't you think we should take care of the remains of your friend first? It's going to have to fall to the governor now. Yeah, if you don't take care of the remains of your friend, she's just going to fall here. Look, and she kinda, friend, uh, uh, I understand you know. what you're saying, but you don't understand what we're doing here and who we're working for. We have something to do. If you're joining us, that's fine. Sasha pulls herself together at that and tears herself away. And she says, I'm ready. Oh, is, you seem to have a very emotional um, connection to this woman. Um, you do want to take care of her remains. He, he's... Seems driven on some business of some sort. I would like to see to her remains, but we have much more pressing matters right now. Sadly, sometimes in things we do, we don't have the luxury of seeing to our lost friends. And I turn away and just start walking in any direction I can. Where are you trying to go? I live on this planet. Sasha doesn't answer her. She just ignores her. Hemi puts his arm around Sasha and just says, I know. It's going to be hard. You know you have to captain the ship, right? Yeah, I know that. We better find this guy and get our business taken care of. 
you're not listening to me. Where are you going? I can probably get us there quite quickly. But... Also, everybody on this planet uses a communicator. So maybe if you were just to explain that you needed like an hour or an hour and a half. Um... I'm sure they would understand seeing that you just lost a friend. Yeah, I like the music, but it's really neat. So, yeah, yeah, Pyrene is still talking to you guys as you're walking away. And, um... And so just, yeah, just for clarity, um, Corey is now playing Pyrene. Yeah, that's... The doctor. This is, yeah, this is... We'll have a conversation about this afterwards. It's, it's a thing. So, um, it's, uh, she, do you guys walk to Ingot? Because I'm assuming Ingot found, you know, uh, uh, Kiga, and then, you know, Kiga ran over to where you guys were. Did so, I find Kiga? Yeah, I mean, she's right there. She was talking to you. You would, you would, you would, um, probably have found her, kind of traced her back or whatever. Oh, okay. If I find her, I'm gonna I want to grab her and uh, uh, start escorting her to where hmm. to the stormtroopers. Okay. She will definitely try to put up a fight. I'm gonna hold on hard, and I have my blaster ready. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she's gonna try to fight, but she's really no match for you. So you guys see. Ingot taking the struggling Mary Allen girl somewhere. Ingot, what are you up to? How far are the stormtroopers from Ingot? Um, I mean, not too far at this point because they were all sort of, uh, I mean, they're escorting the governor in, in you know, kind of like, um, you know, as like a escort or whatever, trying to keep him safe in case of any future attack or further attack. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, throw her in front of me. Like if I'm holding on to her, I'm going to throw her and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull my rifle up on her with a stun setting on. And I'm going to start to shout stormtroopers force sensitive here, turning in bounty now quickly threat alert. Ingot. No! And, uh... And I'm going to tell her, do not move or I shall fire. And Hemi's going to grab Sasha really quickly as she's re reacting to this. And he's just going to pull her in close and say, there's something wrong with that with that droid. It's not who we, who we think it is. We have to do something. The stormtroopers start turning around, looking at this crazy droid, and Sasha, I mean, uh, sorry, um, Kiga is is frantic at this point, and she's she's looking, no, no, you can't do this, no, and she's looking around, looking for a place to run. Um, I want to fire stun if she moves. Yeah, um, actually, before you do that, Pyrene walks up to where Kiga is, and she pulls out a, I don't know, half the size of her body. Well, it looks like a, a stick, kind of. And she touches it to her body, and Kiga falls to the ground. Okay, I think maybe, like, that happens as um, as, him, as uh, Inget also stuns her, you know? Right. And so, like, she gets this, you know, poof, whatever, and, yeah, she falls to the ground. Yeah. Um, um, I, I mean, you, you've seen my sheet. You know what I use for that. Uh -huh. Um and um so it's uh and then and then she looks up and looks at the droid and says you can't turn in a bounty to somebody that's not a awake you must go with your friends because i know that you're friends with the two with a girl that just died please go take care of that negative because, droid negative 
And I'm gonna point my blaster at uh, the doctor. I'm gonna put it off of stun. And at this moment, the uh, the stormtroopers close in, and um, they see Ingot, you know, pointing yeah. his his weapon, and they're like, and and being a part of the you know medical community here on the planet, she turns around and says the call number of the of the stormtrooper in front of her. Um, I think this droid may be malfunctioning, sir. Um, and I'm not so sure that any of us are safe from him right now. Uh, you may want to take him in custody. Negative. I am a licensed bounty hunter. T5674. This humanoid on the floor is a Force-sensitive user. And at that, the stormtroopers, uh, there's about six of them at this point, and uh, about three of them are pointing their guns at you, Inga, and the other three um, at you, Pyrene, and they say, quiet, both of you. And then they look to the droid, and they look to the girl, and one of them <clears throat> picks up the girl, and uh, and, he, and he looks to you, and he says, well done. You, you've turned in someone of great importance. We thank you, droid. Now, be on your way. We'll take care of her from here. Hmm, I wish to you. collect the bounty first. There's, I don't think you understand the position you're in here, droid. We'll take care of this one. You be on your way. And Pyrene gets up and walks away because she's not in any, in any problems. I understand you're doing your jobs. This is not like you're when you're at the hospital and we're obviously cordial. Have a good day, the, the, the squad. And she begins to walk away kind of towards where Hemi and and uh, and Sasha are, but parallel. Because yeah, she doesn't really know them. You know what I mean? Um, and then... Thanks for a moment. And then walks back over to Zaya's body. And she begins to uh, do medical things to prepare her for transport to be privately cremated or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, leaving Ingot to do whatever he needs to do. So are they telling Ingot to get and they're not going to pay him his bounty? That's right. What's going on? <clears throat> That's what they're yeah. telling him. Tasha. Fired on you, buddy. I mean, what the crap is going on? I don't, I, don't, I don't trust either of these two. Me I don't either. know what's going on. One of them seems to work for the Empire, and I don't know who the other one is. I, I, what she's doing. Let's go find the guy with the fedora. Let's go. Hey, Sasha doesn't hesitate to lead the way. <laughs> If uh, if Ingot's not getting paid, he's just going to turn around and say, uh, I will file a grievance with the Bounty Hunter Union. <laughs> you file any grievance you want, droid. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like try to take some photographic evidence that I'm <laughs> turning her in. Sure. That's fine. I'm taking this to court. <laughs> okay, good luck. Um. So, yeah, you do that. And then... Uh, yeah, and, I, then I'll go what? back to the others. Okay, you're going to go. So Hemi and Sasha are proceeding to exit the scene, um, and Ingot starts walking up to you guys. How do you react? I give oh, Hemi that look, like, you know, that you give when you want to ditch somebody. <laughs> yeah, Hemi's, like, he turns around and he's like, Whoa, wait a minute. What are you doing? Turning in the bounty. We should have before. Um, we agreed we weren't going to do that. Correct. Before the captain was dead, relinquishing me from my promise. Ah, and he kind of looks over to Sasha and just says... And what about going to the garrison? A message? Correct. 
I don't think you're a part of our crew. I think you work for the Empire. I am a licensed bounty hunter with the Empire. That is true. No, licensed bounty hunters don't carry messages to garrisons. I was going to find out what their security apparatus was. Why? In case I needed to surround the child. So you were planning to turn her in before the captain was dead? I was planning to prepare any measures needed to secure the crew and our safety. The poor decision making of the humanoids easily influenced by four sensitive users was my concern. I look to Sasha and say, nothing's really changed with him, but he's not really a crew member. He does no. whatever he wants. We can't trust him. I am programmed to collect bounties. Yeah, we read you loud and clearing it. But guess who's captain now? Listen, captain. I could work on some reprogramming code. And he would look over and kind of smirk. You'll have to submit to some reprogramming, I think. I don't know if the captain will let a solo bounty hunter on, our, on board without paying rent. <laughs> Sasha um, looks at you right in the eye and, yeah. I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. And he's going to look at them and, and uh, just kind of, he's not going to say anything. We can discuss this at the docks. I guess we better go see about this job. Guy in a hat. <laughs> Um, and now, now, what's the deal with that, that doctor? Is she, who, why was she trying to take charge like that? And is she coming with us? Where is she? So I'm not really sure why she's trying to take control, but Zaya wanted us to take her on as a crew member because that man that she was with assured her that she'd be out of a job from now on because she couldn't save Zaya. But Hemi, I couldn't have saved Zaya. Nobody could have saved Zaya. No, I could but see that. I'm, much not less so, to I'm not so sure how I feel about that, Pyrene. She's an odd one. We could use a doctor, though. Can't say we could. Yeah, the creator knows I'm not adequate for kind of trouble we seem to get into. I wouldn't mind learning more. I guess we could put her on probation. Where'd she go anyway? She went to um, attend to the body of Zaya. Since you all heartless bastards decided you were just going to leave her there. <laughs> <laughs> She's a. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Both of myself <laughs> at this point. I don't. Uh, were we supposed to call off the 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 mission at that? Should, is that what we should do? Right. I mean, you guys got to do what you want to do. Zaya not, no, anyway. And here, here's a question for you: Would would Zaya have ever shared with us her wishes? For what? For her remains. Should anything happen to her? Or would she have told Laz, who's now not around, to fill us in? Well, you know, what I mean, it was something, you know. It's not the I mean, first it's been time. Like Twenty four hours. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, but it's also not the first time that Sasha and she have 
defending other. It's not like you're not friends. You True. Know I mean? You know, what I mean, between between any of the the four of us, certainly Sasha and and and, and uh, Zaya were, were were friends. You know. True. What I mean? So, so you know, would but would you? Me and you are also friends in real life. I've you've never told me what your wishes are. To, you know, what I mean. <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, we live together a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah you know, Maya, but, Sasha, right? I mean, it's yeah. not like, but, but I just want to be sure that, that, if we walk true. away, is Tyrene gonna stay with the body? Because I don't think she'll find us again after that. No, probably not. You know what I mean? So you guys gotta do what you gotta do. It's not. It's not for me to make this decision. It's between you two. You already made decisions. That you were gonna go and take care of your meeting, so you guys I mean, gotta do you know, sure. Okay, just make <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, it's, sure. a huge, it's a huge, <laughs> ugly, chaotic scene where, where we are right now. Right? There's Absolutely. rubble. There's injured. There's probably other dead. So you know, it's not like we're walking away from a singular body. I mean, yes, you're our friend, but um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys gotta do what you gotta do. It's yeah. You know, how how would <laughs> and and the robot that that wants and... to turn in bounties when he doesn't need to. <laughs> uh, right. Well, and don't forget then... that Sasha's had to leave people behind before. So for her yeah. being able to bury somebody is probably not something that ever gets to happen. <laughs> well, you have so, that opportunity this time, but anyway, there's you know. So. Yeah, Ink In- gets totally calling up his union rep right now. He doesn't care about the body. <laughs> You yeah. find that um, off off planet communications have been temporarily suspended, uh, but I would imagine finding that he's he's filing this all in some sort of um, written format for <laughs> for later. He's really got a form uh, DA twenty two sixty nine grievance. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> right. I don't I don't think Sasha could. I mean, in the moment, she was really falling apart. And now that she's gathered herself together, I'm not sure that she can walk away leaving Zaya's body there, even if it is be a, being intended to. Um, I mean, he's going to essentially check his watch to see how much time we have since the last time he communicated okay. with Dur- Durbos? Dur- Dur- uh, the, uh, Don Bees. Don Bees. Yeah. Don Bees. And Don so... Bees. Sasha will turn to you and say, "Let let's just one more second. Let me just talk to Pyrene for a moment." And uh, so I go back to Pyrene and Zaya's body, and I say, "Pyrene, I I don't know what the protocol here is for dealing with the death of anyone, but if you'd stay with her." while we see to our business, we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up. But right now I need some, I need some distance from what's going on here. And I turn back around and I go back to Hemi. So yeah. Um, if you want to come find me and her, body um we'll be at the morgue you can ask anybody around where you go wherever you're going but you know i i really need a way to make money i gotta i owe a lot to the huts And then she just kind of turns and looks down to the to the body. I look at Hemi. What does she mean by that? I don't know. Um, I turn back. I probably got I don't know a few just a few steps away. I turn and I look at her. What is that supposed to mean? You know, you're not the only one that lost something today. I just lost all of my way to make money. And it's, I, you, I don't know what you're going to do, but if I don't make another payment next month to, to, to Durga and his people, it's, it's going to be bad for me. Durga the hut? 
yeah, I I took out a loan through Durga Hut, and I I need to make monthly payments to him, and in, in exchange for you know like my schooling, and I he's the reason that I do what I do, and I usually I'm a very good doctor. Like your friend said here, there wasn't very much left of her to be able to fix. So it's I promise I'm a very skilled, very skilled doctor, um, and I I really would love to where are you going we have somebody we have to meet with because we're working with durga the hut so if you want to be a part of this crew your first task can be to help us sort things out with our friend's body here we just lost a crew member not 24 hours ago and now we've We've lost another one already. It's a really bad day for you guys. I, and so, I fully understand. It's, it, it's, yes, I, I will do so. So I will have her body transported. Like I said, we'll be at the morgue. But Thank you. You know, I, I, I can... We'll meet you at the morgue and pay any necessary fees. Please, and then please, we'll sort this please, out with what please, you're yes, going to do and what we're going to do and whether or not you're going to join us. That's very understandable, but if you're working for Durga, do you know Cordella? Yeah. Cordell is the one who sent us here on this job. Wow, that's really bizarre that we have all that same parallel. Um, but, okay, so, you know, I, I'm very, I speak with Cordella almost on a daily basis because she's my liaison between the, you know, the, the huts and so on and so forth, and I I do a lot of medical things for them too. They bring me their wounded and so on and so forth. And we don't like, I don't like charge them. And like, so, you know, it, it's, if you were telling me it was going on here, I'm sure I could help, you know, I could have the body transferred and I, I know the city very well. It's, I could probably show you shortcuts to get there. Hell, I might even know the person that, that you're meeting. I just don't know how that me taking a body back to the morgue is going to prove to you that I can be trustworthy to you. I look at Hemi at a loss. Poor, I don't know. poor Sasha's I don't know. on absolute overload right now. <laughs> do, do you understand that we have a job to do and our friend died? You seem to be interested in ensuring the body is taken to where it needs to go. So we're asking you to do that and then join us as she wished. What, whatever you want to do, I was just trying to help as your friend asked me in her dying wishes. And she turns around and she begins to, to work on the body and you can hear her sobbing a little bit to herself because she's starting to feel the gravity of what's going on that if she doesn't have money, she's also going to probably be a dead person here in, you know, within the next month or so. So, um... It's. I'll be at the morgue, and she just kind of drops her head, and you know uh, goes over and talks to one of the other emergency responders that are there. I look at Hemi. Um, can't be that hard to find this market square. Let's let's get moving. Uh, yeah, and when he checked the time, how, how much time had passed since his last communique? Well over an hour. You've probably, um, it's probably been a couple, you know, three, four hours at this point. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And, and do I have any miscommunications? Because he said he was going to reach out to us after an hour. No, you don't, actually. Okay, so then... I guess what I'm going to do then is it, realizing now how much time has passed. Um, I'm going to try to dial. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but is there like caller ID? Uh, can I see the the number that called me and can I can I recall it? Yeah, yeah, you'd be able to. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to try to reach back to that person. Sure. And um, he goes do 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 do
and then um, finally, after you're just about to hang up, you're thinking he's not going to pick up, and he says, "Hello, hello, who is this? Oh, oh, it's, and- it's you, it's you. Oh, my friends, <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I did not call you back. Did you, did you hear about the chaos in the in the Imperial Square?" <coughs> yeah. And foregoing any any accents this time, he's still coughing the rubble out of his lungs. <coughs> yeah, heard about it. I heard it directly. Listen, we need to we need to meet and do this fast. We need to get off this planet. This place is insane. Oh, my friend, I'm I'm sorry. I, it will be a little while, I imagine. You see, after chaos like this, well. The king is not holding his feast anymore, at least not for a while. I mean, yeah, I could still use your help, of course, but but I am in no great hurry. If you would like to stick around for a while, I would be more than happy to take your services when when the feast is back on, but I fear right now, well... And then he kind of, uh, he pauses for a minute and he says, there's too much Imperial in presence here. I think the king would rather, would rather not get involved. I'll have to call Cordelia and see if she wants us wasting our time. We'll reach back and he hangs up abruptly. Sure. Sure. And he just says, Griffin, blasters, and <sighs> can we ever get paid for something? Please. That's insane. And I turn to Ingot. Ingot, what happened to your Rodian friend? I thought you were turning him in for a bounty, too. He was not worth a bounty here on Tordaria. Worthless to us, he was. Well, so where the girl is he didn't get your bounty either, but you turned her in. Did <laughs> not know that I would be stiffed by Imperials. First time that that happened. They must uh, be really cheap here. Big surprise. You stand around in a big circle of Imperials and turn someone over and expect them to not pretend that they have the upper hand? You are Dang a formal it. rebel, if I remember correctly. I would have thought your your uh, programming would have made you smarter. My programming did not account for rebel scum to blow up our friend and dear captain. Hemi's going to try to cool case. himself. Yeah, he's going to try to cool himself. He's just going to go Captain, we have plenty of time now. Do you want to just take Zaya, put her on the ship, get off this planet, and call Cordelia? Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Wait, someone uh, said I, I'm not hearing something, I don't think. What? Someone type. Wait, I'm sorry. Sam, did you type something in I, Discord? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was just being a dumbass. So don't, don't worry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I missed hearing something. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? No, we already did. No, I'm good. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Um. Basically, yeah, what do you say about an exit? We can take her with us. We, we have no one to meet. There's nothing to do. Well, let's make sure we got fuel. I don't know how the, all this affected that. See if they got it done. But I'm with you. I think that's a, a great plan. You want to go get your doctor friend? <sighs> and uh, in the meantime, I'll find something to put her on. And uh, I'm going to just start scanning. I mean, there's rubble everywhere. I'm basically just looking yeah. for like half a door or something like that. When you, look over, to... when, you, when you look over to where Pyrene and Zaya's body is, she's already been loaded onto what would be like a gurney that's floating. Um, and uh, looks as if she's about to be loaded in some type of transport. She's doing as you told her and going to the morgue. 
But she doesn't know that we had this conversation and lost her, you know, the contact. Well, she couldn't. She couldn't have got that far in that short time it took to have that conversation. Um, so I, I'll, I scan around for her, and uh, it's happening. Huh? You see it happening clearly. Like I said, she's on a floating like gurney type deal. Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, scan around for her and and rejoin her. Pyrene, we've had a change of plans. Unfortunate for you. Yeah, well, all this chaos has uh, canceled things for now. So what we'd like to do is take Zaya onto the ship with us and deal with her our own way. So if you care to join us, you're still welcome to do that. And we can talk about everything as a group. Uh, but we need to make sure the ship got fueled. I don't know how all this In chaos Inge affected that. Ingi would tell the party, uh, under Imperial protocols, after terrorist attack, all ports are shut down. No outbound space travel is allowed. They will quarantine and search for any rebel connections between those in the port and those trying to leave. Ugh. Well, we can just hang out. Thing that and you has done properly here, um, but he's he's absolutely correct. Uh, the the planet will be on lockdown until uh, until they straighten this out. Um, again, we can we can take care of her remains, and there's many beautiful places here in this green planet that you could um, maybe spread her ashes or do whatever you'd like. Um, it's uh. I have a place here. It's not big. Is that robot with you? Is there a bounty on the deceased? <laughs> on Zaya? <laughs> no. You uh, already know there isn't, Ingot. You checked us all out already, didn't you? Yes. All this, all this robot talks about is money. Is, yeah, he's... Is he, part of, is he a part of your crew? Not exactly. <laughs> well, he that that remained to be no, discussed. No, <laughs> so it looks like you have two people to discuss corruption mm. with. Very interesting. Um, and what was with that little girl? I, I, you know, I shocked her with my stick to make it so that I could have collected her, but then he just gave her up for no reason. That was really weird. Do you know? Uh, she was a force sensitive murderer wanted by the Imperial authorities. Something I believe you would support. But I don't just give random people away. Not random. Force sensitive and a murderer. Confessed nonetheless. And um, it's not illegal to be force sensitive. They're, they're it real. is. Under Imperial decree, all force sensitives have a bounty on their head. See, but you, you see, you think that I'm Imperial just because I do my job. I think that's really funny, their droid. Um, I don't, just because I work for the Imperials doesn't make me Imperial, does it? I'm just doing my job here. Correct. A Correct. person in the employ of the Empire. Which, which are the same the people. Regulations. See, you, you, you talk too much all about regulation. You don't understand what human interaction and humanoid interaction is like. It's not just protocol droid. That's not Could you it. perhaps introduce yourself with this lecture while on board our ship instead of in this blast zone? The blast has already happened, I believe, there. And the anybody? child is already gone. The body's still on the floor right over there. You can't see her. Oh, no, they took her. They yeah. Took her. yeah, they did take her. her. Oh, yeah, yeah, they took her away. Yeah, potentially valuable crew member. Yeah. But really, she was a member of about that crew. now. But I think we should get on our ship. Well, um, correct. She turns, she turns around and says to another, you know, person that she used to work with, I guess, um, that, uh, 
you don't need this gurney, right? It mostly damaged anyways. It's barely floating. Don't mind if I take it, right? And that that person actually would look at you and say, I believe the Governor Jax said you no longer have privileges here. So why don't you just get out of here and leave us all alone? I step up to that person. Well, would it be all right with you if we just borrowed this long enough to deal with our fallen friend? And she looks over and looks kind of sympathetic and she says, fine, just make sure you bring it back. Thank you. We will. We'll, we will. Um, so and I take one. all of it and I start heading to the ship. And the first thing Hemi says to Sasha as they're walking away is, We're, I'm not bringing that gurney back. <laughs> we'll send the ingot. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I Why think... would we leave the planet? We have a mission to do nonetheless. A rebel nope. attack would not deter us. It just did. And I think that's actually the perfect sort of spot to end it. You know, he says it just did. Yeah. And then, you know, then the like the camera would pan out um, and up out in the orbit. And then you would see um, the Imperial Star Destroyer is now like sending shuttles down to the planet. And, you know, there's a swarm of activity and there's like a whole bunch of ships just like stopped in orbit over the planet waiting, you know, inspection and all this stuff. And and uh as you guys would head to your ship, um, you know it's just a matter of time before the Imperials are going to come and talk to you. Uh, and you're very well aware of the fact that you came in with a ship with sketchy credentials. You were in the company of a Force-sensitive. And... You were yes. all in the square during this rebel attack. And so with that, <laughs> we end the session. Ouch. And thank you guys for playing. That was sort of intense and a little bit um, crazy, but it uh, it worked. And um, I cannot wait to pick it up in a couple of weeks and see where this thing takes us and we are truly in the sandbox now <laughs> somebody get a shovel <laughs> crazy <laughs> and there's cool sand windmills that you put the sand in and it goes down and <laughs> yeah. any way the wind blows I feel bad for Hemi this poor guy man he's like the only one <laughs> trying to like do the right thing I'm just like, what is going on? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> He's like, F my life. Yep. Yep. It's that's that's Thanks, funny. Uh, anybody that watches, have a good night. Um we should probably turn off the <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, um, thanks, everyone. This has been a, another episode of the Sunday Sandbox. Um, we generally do this every two weeks, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. So check us out. I think March 4th will be the next one, if I remember. Yeah, March 4th. Um, same time, same place, and we'll uh, we'll see where this goes.